Comparison uh, to a hurricane, but, but this wasn't a hurricane. This wasn't an act of nature. This was an act of a person or people, uh, uh, someone with a gun. And I think it, it, it is a lot of people are talking about the security issues to our energy infrastructure that this brings about. Some gunshots knocking out power to tens of thousands of people. WRL investigates Colin Browder joining us now. We heard what the governor had to say about the concerns there. Top of the priority list. What is the work being done? Well, Dan, first of all, consider there are hundreds of these electric substations all across the state, each one a potential target. In this case, you had a substation shot up, and then within an hour, another one. Duke Energy isn't talking specifics about security, but an industry expert tells us how this can happen and what needs to happen to prevent the next attack. This electric grid map shows North Carolina's web of substations and transformers, vital connections that showed their vulnerability with the Moore County attacks this past weekend. How vulnerable is our electric grid? Well, you know, I would have liked to have thought it was less vulnerable than it apparently is. John Wellinghoff is CEO of Grid Policy, Inc. and former head of the Federal Energy Regulator Commission, who says it doesn't take much sophistication to take out a transformer. A, a deer rifle is sufficient. Did these Moore County substations have cameras and other security measures in place? We can't speak specifically about what we had at these particular substations, but I can tell you that, that certainly we are we are working with local law enforcement uh, to provide them with any information that we have. Spokesman Jeff Brooks says Duke Energy continues to invest in cyber and physical security along its grid. However, Wellinghoff says, unlike those in Moore County, substations should be blocked from view with walls, sandbags, or even an opaque fence wrapping. The grid is still vulnerable and it is still relatively inexpensive to mitigate those vulnerabilities and we should be moving forward as rapidly as possible to address the problem. We do recognize that there are threats uh, in the public space to the grid, and those are things that, that we have to take into account in our system planning and, and, and work to be better every day. And, and this isn't the first time that there's been a coordinated attack on the power grid. The industry was put on alert back in 2013 after a San Jose, California sniper attack there coming up at 6 o'clock. Wellinghoff, uh, Wellinghoff tells us what changed, but also what didn't as a result, Dan. Very interesting. All right, Cullen Browder with that report. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon.